Hi, it's Anna Mason and in this watercolour tip video I wanted to show you some of the tricks to getting the 3D effects on this gorgeous agapanthus bloom. Each individual flower needs to be painted carefully in order to achieve a full tonal or value range within it which ultimately will give it a 3D look. The key is to paint each flower individually and carefully before stepping back and assessing the tonal values across the whole bloom. So I'll focus on this most prominent of flowers at the front to show you the process that I use throughout. First, I begin with a really detailed and accurate drawing. Working from a photo I'd taken of the flower made this considerably easier. I flip my painting and reference photo around and start the painting by laying down my lightest tones or values with a watery pale mixture as a wash with my medium sized brush over the palest petals and then with my tiny brush within the palest stamens. Next, I use a slightly darker blue mix to work in the same way onto the flowers that were a darker blue, so that I can start to make sense of my complex drawing in terms of what colours need to be placed where. And again, I use a tiny brush to apply this mix to the dark stripes on paler petals, as well as any darker stamens. Then I begin work on the darkest tones within the painting, darkening up the little stems called pedicles with a dark grey mix. I also use this on the centres of any flowers where I could see it, carefully working around the paler stamens there. Next I use a really dark blue mix to pick out the darkest areas within the flowers, mainly in the buds, before going on to darken up the stem. With these darkest tones in place, it makes it a whole lot easier to judge how dark to take the mid-tones within the petals. Beginning with the darker mid-tones, I use a bright blue to concentrate on painting another layer on the buds and the darker stripes on the lighter petals. Of course, the layer underneath is now totally dry, so this sits on top without bleeding into the colour underneath. Then, within each petal, I go through a stage of tonal adjustments. I use a watery mix to darken those parts of the petals that need it, which is much easier to identify now that the stripes have been darkened. I make sure to feather the edge of this shape of colour as I apply it, so that I can create a smooth transition from dark to light as I layer. Getting these tonal variations right is what gives the petals their shape. Now those petals are a little darker, I can see that the stripes also need to be darker, so I add another layer of a similar mix as before. Keeping the mix pale means I don't risk taking them too dark. Then I repeat the same process, making a further subtle adjustment to the petals and then stripes by adding another layer of the pale mix to those areas that need it, always making sure that the layer underneath is dry first. Once that looks about right, I darken the stamens a little too, before moving on to paint the rest of the petal midtones in this same way, making gradual adjustments in layers. Now I can see that the darkest tones in the pedicles and buds should be darkened, so I apply another layer of the darker mixes to those areas. In turn, this then requires I paint another layer onto the stripes within the petals to bring them back in balance tonally. Then, to bring the paler parts of the petals back into balance, I apply another very watery layer over those parts that look too light, using my tiny brush. And in doing this, I lightly scrub at the paper so as to blend in the layers I'd painted before and create a smooth transition between shades. To balance things out properly, I then paint another layer to the darker edges to the petals, and now that I'm using this smaller brush, I make sure that I neaten up the petal edges as I darken them a fraction. With all this tonal range painted, the petals are looking really 3D, and it just remains for me to use my smallest brush and some thicker grey paint to darken up the flower centre around the stamen, as well as the stamens themselves in some areas. And finally, once I'm happy that the flower is looking correct tonally, I add in the very dark anther at the ends of the stamens and then darken up a little around them. Finally, I take my time to work on all the rest of the flowers in the exact same way. I hope this helps to show you how to tackle the process of creating a 3D looking flower like this. It can feel really daunting to tackle such a tricky flower, but if you're methodical and take your time with it, you can break it down and paint it piece by piece so that the whole bloom pops off the page. 
A full step-by-step -step tutorial of this Agapanthus is available now in my online school. If you've enjoyed this tip video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'd love it if you'd share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to take one of my tried and tested step-by-step -step tutorials for free, hop on over to animationart.com where you'll find even more resources to help you pick up your brush and paint the way you've always wanted to. Remember, you won't improve your painting unless you make the time to paint. So be sure to schedule in some me time this week and paint something you love. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon with another tip for creating watercolours with WOW. Hello, welcome, face. welcome to the step-by-step -step tutorials. <laughs>